Hey everyone, we are live on Facebook. Paul Wagner, Dan Briggs of Between the Buried and Me. Thank you guys so mm -hmm. much for being here. Namaste. Appreciate it so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, they will be taking your questions along with my questions. Uh, you can absolutely join in. <laughs> Hold on. I can hear what I'm saying on this. Let's turn down the I volume. I feel like we're on like QVC or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Like QVC, yeah. the yeah. shopping yeah, channel. Yeah, take a caller and <laughs> we, we can take some callers. To for sure. Okay, well, Automata 1, the fans have already gotten that one. Uh, Hopefully. Great, great, well, you should get it, <laughs> I think. Uh, a great uh, half hour of music already. I mean, Thank you. I know that fans are super uh, anticipating Automata 2, which is gonna be out in the summer, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, the summer of 2021. Oh, excellent, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. yeah. For yeah. another half hour of BT band music. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, if you could compare what the two, Automata 1, Automata 2, how would you compare the two albums? Right, well, you know, like, like with our last handful of, of concept records, we we're, all, we're, we're kind of establishing musical and conceptual themes early in the record that kind of set the tone for the rest of the thing. And, uh, you know, in part two, there's, there's some big themes, that musical themes that come back and play a big role in tying the story together and, uh, you know, leading up to the big finale to the album. And, uh, you know, the story is, it, you know, in a place where it, you know, kind of, uh, it, gets, it gets, gets a bit darker, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's cool, but, you know, musically speaking, I mean, it, you know, when part two starts up, it's, uh, we come right out with a 13 minute long song that you know, it was a big instrumental intro and a lot of dynamics, big chorus, and um, you know, there's, I don't know, I, th I, think, I think maybe some of the more theatrical elements come out in the second half um, and, and uh, different, different dynamics than, than really in the first. The first bit might be a little heavier. I'd okay. Say. I'd say. Yeah, I think fans are really digging how heavy it was. It's even, especially in the beginning with Condemned to the Gallows, super, super heavy sound. Right. And then with Blot, starts to get weirder and mm -hmm. weirder. And then you guys were telling me that after uh, Blot, we were kind of comparing it to Colors. Uh, the next song after Blot is sort of the Ants of the Sky of the two-parter. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the new ants of the sky, <laughs> so to speak. Well, we hate to compare it to old stuff because we're always sure. trying to to do new stuff. But uh, you know, in terms of like kind of where it is in the in the story and where it is in the in the overall piece musically, it it's it, you know it has a lot of dynamics. There's a lot of instrumental sections, so. Uh, it's just a little more dense, I think, mm. musically. Uh, probably musically, one of the more dense songs on the record. Probably the most d uh, dense song. So, in that regard, I think it is kind of the. If you had to compare it to an album that we wrote uh, 11 years ago, <laughs> yes. it would be the Ants of the Sky of of the new album. So, For sure. Um, so yeah, it's just you know, it, I think it musically it just takes kind of a turn and starts starts yeah. really um, rolling a little more. With the, with the but it really, ideas. it really picks up, you know, right where the last one, um, last one ends. And it's funny because initially, with Blot, we had it, you know, ringing out on, on mm -hmm. a little D minor chord, and then that kind of transitions us right in. And we, we ended up cutting that before we even split the albums. But um, we do that ring out live yeah. now to get into Astral Body. But um, it, it's essentially just. That guy ends, and then the next thing just picks right up, yeah. you know. Um, and it's one of the things where, like, even though, you know, part one might be a heavier thing, part two might be a little bit more theatrical, quirky, whatever. It's like th it's one of those things where we wrote it as one thing, you know, and mm -hmm. you hear it all together, and it's like, oh, that's it's a BT Bam album, yep. you know. All the elements are there. I get it, you know. So yeah. So for those who don't know, the concept of the Automata uh, double album is. Uh, a weird uh, company that's sort of mining people's dreams for the purposes of entertainment. Yes. So uh, I know this is something that Tommy came up with. So what was the discussion like when he said, hey guys, I've got this idea for, for the new record? Was it a bit mind-blowing? Yeah, I just sort of rolled my eyes. I said, you're an idiot. This is <laughs> not, uh, no, I thought it was cool and, and kind of you know, pretty relevant. Um, 
obviously it's, it's, it's sort of this futuristic idea that, you know, we've evolved to the point where the only way we're entertained now is to literally uh, have the dreams of, of celebrities essentially be broadcast to us mm. so that we're actually in the minds of these people that we seem to idolize. And, uh, you know, and, and even in today's world, uh, you know, the accessibility to, to like famous people is so prevalent, like through yeah. social media, um, you know, uh, even now it's like Ben Affleck's tattoo is like oh, a right. headline <laughs> on, in like mainstream publications. It's like, well. The sad thing is I know the tattoo. But have you seen like, the tattoo? Oh, I mean, yeah. It's a, yeah, but whatever, I mean, <laughs> the motherfucker got a tattoo, I mean, who cares? Yeah. Uh, so, um, but yeah, you know, the idea being that years and years down the road that, that that's actually where we're at, where we're packing arenas to sort of see the, the subconscious mm, right. of, of, of celebrities be broadcast to us and, uh, and how, you know, uh, you know, famous people are almost like dehumanized in a sense. They've become such, just they're just commodities for our consumption. And, and so this is sort of the, the last evolution of that, that concept. That's sort of what Tommy, I think, kind of wrote about and how that sort of uh, can, can, can destroy a human being. Um, you know, I think we see it a lot with, um, you, know, we, you know, this past year we had the suicides of uh, Chris Cornell, Chester Bennington. These are people who seemingly have it all, but, you know, uh, everybody has their, their demons. And uh, as a society, we're almost like we'd, we would just soon be entertained by that as opposed to actually maybe addressing it or, or helping them or something yeah. like that. So that's sort of, you know, kind of the general concept of, uh, of the album. You know, sure. Yeah, Chris passed away when we were working on the end of the album um, and the very last song, The Grid, you know, I think it was just, it was one of those things that it affected us all a lot, you know what I mean, as far as like, that we grew up on, yeah. like, uh, you know, consistently something that we had listened to since, sure. you know, I mean, I was 10 when that album came out, I remember seeing the Black Hole Sun video. Oh, and, of course, um, classic. Mm -hmm. And there, there is definitely a little musical like tip of the cap to to Soundgarden in in the grid and in, in, sure. in the bridge of the song and it was cool to kind of be able to tie that in musically as well yeah. with what Tommy was feeling and thinking mm -hmm. and I think that song actually kind of deals with um, a sort of almost like society sort of recognizing mm -hmm. that, that um, the, the wrongness of the whole of the whole thing, you know, yeah. and so that's kind of cool too. Is that for once in one of our albums, it kind of ends with sort of a kind of a, it's like almost a happy ending. Like there's there's sort of this understanding that, and musically, that's definitely hinted as well. Yeah. It's it's it ends on a much different note actually for a, a between the buried me record. Yeah, it's, for sure. It's you're cool. sending you're saying you're telling me earlier before we went on that it kind of gets darker in the second half, right? It does. So that's what people can expect from that. Right, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's get to some fan questions here. Uh, when will we ever get to hear "Swim to the Moon" live? <laughs> well, you know, a few tours ago, we did a we did a thing where we basically played from the middle of the song to the end, and I mean that was about seven minutes. It's a long one. And it's, it's you know one. that and that bit that we did really f still fits in with the BT Bam of 2018. You know where we've kind of come musically and. Um, I could see us doing that again and maybe even, you know, in celebrating the 10 year of uh, Great Mr. Act next year to some extent, um, but doing the full thing. The I just don't thing, think that's yeah. on wow. the agenda. It's yeah. So that's I something you guys have been talking about doing the, no. the full, no, not the full no, 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 Mr. Act? No. Okay. No, 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 but just, you know, it's, you want to, you want to say like, uh, you know, okay, you know, hi, we put out that record and. Maybe we'll we'll do a, a thing, but not not the full swim to the moon. Yeah, <laughs> not, we're it's not hard with like any kind of old material. People give us a lot of flack for not playing enough old material, but well, it's you know, it's tough for us because we have a lot of material now. We've been at it for a long time. Some of these songs are tremendously long, so to take a song that you know only a small minority of our fans are really interested in hearing, and for us to spend twenty minutes of a set playing that song. Um, I don't know, it's just tough. I mean, you're trying to create yeah. a set list that has a, has a flow to it musically, you know, that, and, and that 
and play stuff that people are into. Mm -hmm. um, that's hard to do for us because you know yes. some of the stuff is just that, like like Dan was saying. You know, the first half of Swimming to the Moon, it, it doesn't necessarily jive with with what we're doing now. So to try to cram yeah, that sure. into a set. It is tough, so it's not. You'll see with what we do tonight. I mean, we we're playing essentially like the back half of obfuscation, right? And seemingly just kind of starting with the instrumental jam kind of section and the way that it comes out of what we're doing before it. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a fun thing and ties in with what we're what we're all about. Yeah. Killer. Uh, Jason says, been listening to Automata One religiously since March 9th. Awesome. Uh, Daniel says, what's your favorite song or moment so far from Automata One? Oh, man. That's hard to say. I mean, Millions is definitely fun to play live. It's uh, where it is in this set, you know, we're kind of swooping down dynamically and it just it just feels a little different. Like, I feel like it's just a different energy and that that's kind of fun, but... Uh, you know, we both love playing yeah, Blot. Yeah, I, pl I love playing Blot. Yeah. I just love the, the dynamics of that one. and um, So that's probably my favorite, and it's probably my favorite song off of the first half, or uh, Tom mm -hmm. One, so. It's fun. Um, yeah, I would say Blot for me. Nice. So I'm sure everybody's wondering if there is eventually going to be uh, a full Automata tour, mm -hmm. like you've done with many, many previous mm -hmm. albums, playing it front to back. Mm -hmm. Can we expect that in the, the near future? Maybe. I, th I know because of, you know, no one's heard part two yet. People might just not like part two, but yeah. I love, I love part two personally. And um, the way that those four songs are, they're really kind of like, really one sort of like, they, they gel real good as, as one sort of thing. And um, there's the thought that maybe we'll do that. Uh, in okay. conjunction with some other stuff, we're throwing out some touring ideas for next year. and. There's the idea of maybe doing the, like an evening with thing. So we'll see if we Ooh, if okay. we actually pull that off that without would, without passing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would give you a lot more time to play with exactly. a lot of dynamics and yeah, for sure. the evening with stuff, you know. I uh, think that'd Opeth be has uh, done it. Mm -hmm. Dream Theater. Yeah. Right. We're we're getting to that point where uh, like Paul said, we just have so much to pull from. Yeah. You know, even this tour, I think we're doing about 75 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. with the deer hunter doing like an hour, and uh, and that was, you know, tricky to put together and cover as much ground. I guess we just kind of nixed colors for this tour, so yes, that, that, just, that just saved just us a little it, yeah. bit. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, we're trying to cover as much ground as possible, but still have it sound like a cohesive... Uh, Thing. Sure. Right. Yeah. We got a hello from Mexico. Oh, okay. Hello ah. from Australia. Uh, How you going? Good I night. want to touch your leg again, Paul. Winky face. It's a dude who said that. Oh. Okay. Uh, I so I guess this guy touched your leg in Australia. Do you have a <coughs> I don't collection know. of this? <laughs> he could be. A, I don't know. He could be referring to a number of things. <laughs> a lot of weird things have happened on stage in our 18 years of 17 years, whatever. So. Yeah. I don't, don't, don't want to go into... Could be anything. Yeah, it could be anything. Fair enough. Uh, someone's asking, which is the most difficult Automata song? I guess it could be uh, either part one I or part two. Oh. Well, I don't know about part two yet, because we haven't played any of them yet. They haven't <laughs> played the songs yeah. in their entirety. I've yet. seen kids doing YouTube covers of, uh, oh, wow. of some of the songs on Automata 1 that we haven't even played together as a band. So, so that's um, impressive, oh, wow. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's hard so. to say. I mean, the uh, the arpeggios, the unison arpeggio thing we're doing and condemned, I have to practice about three times yeah. or so before we go on that stage. That part's really it's easy for me. I know. <laughs> it's the <laughs> first thing we play, but it's you know. Yeah. No, that that one's tricky. Um, I don't know. The, the songs we play in, on this tour are, from, pretty, are pretty pretty easy, yeah. actually. All right. Uh, hello from Argentina. Mm. Very good. Uh, ask. Some a bunch of people are asking about South American tour dates. That's <laughs> that's, that's typical. Come to Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Um, come to Brazil. Come to Argentina. We've honestly talked to our manager about it. It's on. We hopefully wanna, on the docket. We want to go there. Yeah, we're Have trying you never to go. Been there? We, I, uh, BT Bam has never been. There. Never been to I, South I, America. I went there once with. Uh, I was filling in for Lamb of God and. Oh, that's right. I yeah. loved it. I, so I'm I'm jonesing to go back. The sure. fans down there. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I can expect. Uh, Massive shows down there if you guys I go. I hope so. That would be amazing. We want to go. Awesome. Hello from India. Oh wow. Uh, 
One thing I want to really know is, uh, of course, last year you did the colors tour. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd, for people like me, I missed the first colors tour because I didn't own a car at the time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So to see it this time was like, oh, I was so happy. Cool. The, cr the fans went off. Yeah. How was the experience for you guys, relearning the album and then playing it again every night 10 years later? It was a little surreal, I mean, because we had just gotten out of the studio recording this automata thing, and, uh, you know, you just, you instantly were just like, it was like you stepped through, like, the Stargate portal or something, and you just ended up 10 years back. I was, you know, relearning this stuff and just remembering very specific memories of writing the record and like sleeping on a futon mattress. Oh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, man, I mean, 2007 was a lot different than 2017 for us. So, uh, and then on stage, you know, it was interesting because there's, you know, playing those songs and just that set was like a much different energy than we kind of have now, mm -hmm. you know, mm. but it was, it was fun. Wow. Yeah, Very for fun. me, what I took away from it was just like, I mean, it was a pretty humbling experience to, to play these old, you know, to us, they're old songs, and to have all these people come out to the show that that stuff still resonates with them, mm -hmm. um, or it resonated enough at that time anyway for them to want to come out and, and see that that show. So, like Dan said, a super surreal experience, um, and just really cool, you know, it made me really sort of appreciate, um, not that I didn't appreciate, but appreciate even more the fans that have kind of like stuck with us, you know, kind of all these all these years. So for sure, um, like I said, you know, that's that's an you know that's a pretty old record, mm -hmm. ten years old, and and to have people still it, it mean that much to them that they want to come out and and see a ten year um, reprise of it is is pretty awesome. Yeah. So this is definitely a nerdy question, but how was it playing Viridian live? Because that that's just one of those songs that everyone just kind of pays attention to, and after that last note, it's like. Ooh, yeah. yeah, no, it was uh, it was fine. I, I added, you know, if, I mean, what was interesting was when we toured and wrote the record. I mean, in two thousand seven, I didn't play with any any effects really or anything on my bass. I didn't play with distortion or anything. You know, I think I'd go up on stage with a tuner, and that was it. So, with this set, I was trying to integrate toys where I could. You know, have mm. some fun, and and you know, in that, I you know, I played with some chorus on. You know, tried to. Uh, you know, get get a little more of that Jocko sound, oh, uh, which obviously was what I was trying to you know channel when I wrote it. You know, with all the harmonics up off the fretboard and stuff, and uh, um, it was fun. But dude, relearning it. I mean, I hadn't played that since we'd played a, a color yeah. show, and I, you know, even just trying to feel out those rhythms and stuff. I mean, it took a second, and what was interesting was. When we were playing that, it was before we had clicks in our ears, and so I just was playing off of the, you know, the the the, the line that that the arpeggios were kind of doing on the guitar. The guitar and so yeah. I really had to like kind of zone in. Okay, well, actually, on beat, you know, three is when I come in with this, and you know, really count as opposed to how I was just feeling Paul's arpeggio shapes before. So nice. Uh, hello from Honduras. Is there any chance to create a second album of co of covers? I really enjoy the Anatomy of from oh. Jeffrey. Is that Jeff Paré? Is that, is that <laughs> Jeffrey Diaz. Oh, okay, oh, no, Diaz. okay. Yeah. That was our merch guy. Yeah. No, this dude's from Honduras. <laughs> is your merch okay, guy in Honduras? Also from Honduras? Yeah, he's oh, really? No. <laughs> oh, okay. He's from Boston. Um, but uh, what was the question? Cover record. Cover, oh, cover album. record. <laughs> Well, we did, uh, for actually for the, I think we'll probably throw it online after this tour, we did uh, a thing with Deer Hunter where we did one of each other's songs coming oh, into wow. this tour. So we did their song, The Tank, and they did uh, um, Rapid Calm, and we did a little seven inch for like the VIP for this tour. Oh, wow. We might put that online afterwards so people can hear that. We did the Bohemian Rhapsody thing a couple mm -hmm. years ago. and. That's awesome. Every so often we bust one out. A full I, album? I don't know. I wouldn't be opposed to it. It was fun. It was more than anything, it's just hard to like find the time to do something like that. Right. Um, but we had a blast doing the um, Anatomy of. Right. And honestly, I think that um, we did that before we we did um, Colors. Yeah. And um, recording, learning those songs and recording them and and putting our sort of spin on it, I think it almost kind of helped 
helped us um, find some identity and, and helped move us into colors and kind of figure out what who we wanted to be as a band and stuff like that and and uh, incorporate some different you know styles that we had never tried before so I think it, it was a fun album to do, but it was also like a pretty pretty cool learning experience. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I wouldn't be opposed to, to right. doing another. There's obviously countless other bands and songs yeah. that we would love to, to cover, but it's just a matter of finding the, the time to do it right. and the, the money and sure. sort of the more sort of real things that you have to be concerned about when you're in a band. But we still do the, from time to time, you know? Yeah, so the, the, the covers do pop up, yeah, which we'll, is always we'll the same. Up, yeah. That they do, for sure. Uh, Chance Fuller says, my girlfriend is frustrated that I won't take Automata out of my car. <laughs> so, you gotta sorry. Find, you gotta find a new girl. That's, that's yeah. her problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, here's an interesting question. Um, Jake says, there's a different mix of the song Alaska out there on the mm -hmm. web. Uh, was there originally a different mixed version of the album Alaska when it was recorded that got lost? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Oh, is it a loaded? I didn't. It's a lot of. Well, that was a. So Jamie did do. He did. A, he did. Did he actually alternate. release it? Though? I don't think it ever got released. It probably something leaked. Something Some, did leaked. something leak. Uh, long story short, you know, we that record we had a lot of problems in the production of that record. Um, one of which was we weren't happy with the mix but mm -hmm. um you know again one of those things budget time this that and the other thing it, it got released um years later we did do uh jamie king did an alternate mix of it but uh it never got released i think it was just for us it was just for <laughs> us <laughs> we oh, just wow. and listened yeah, to it <laughs> uh, because you know a lot of things got got wow. changed he might from have the time we recorded the it to or... the time it was mixed there was a lot of a lot of things about it that went haywire. So mm -hmm. yeah, he, he remixed it for us, and I guess somehow it, wow. may, have, it may have leaked. Right. Um, somehow. So not but, an official. But okay. there was definitely no official release of it. I think was it that album that Victory did a an instrumental release of I think without they did. Tommy. Again, Maybe. not band approved. It's yeah. Just, that's what happens when you don't own your. Your fucking master. <laughs> you know, someone else does. Yeah, some yeah, yeah. industry okay. stuff. Right? Yes, yeah. industry it's stuff. It's always a middleman. <laughs> owns your art. <laughs> uh, Kylie Wilkins says, My son was named after Mordecai. He's 10 now. Wow. What do you think his name is? Yeah, what's Is it name? Mordecai? <laughs> <laughs> is the middle name Mordecai? I hope it's Mordecai. That's, cool, that's, a, ki that's a kick that's ass cool. name. That's from Royal Tannenbaum's, right? Yeah, Royal Tannenbaum's, the yeah, bird. The bird. Very bird nice. Mordecai. Uh, let's see. Uh, people are saying, yeah, we want cover album, we want a cover album. <laughs> Jeez, uh, I guess so. I guess they don't I'm like just tired of our songs. Our songs. We yeah. suck at writing our own songs. We might as well just uh, play what, What's the worst mess up you've had live? Oh, jeez. I mean, the thing that's kind of good is that when we individually kind of have, you know, mental or whatever sort of biffs, it seems like there's enough other people playing right mm. that it just gets kind of lost, you know what I mean? I mean. And I come from the school where no matter how bad you mess up, you still make noise. You just so do it, yeah. I just, uh, if I butcher it real bad, I'll just literally slide around on the guitar yeah. just so there's some sort of audio coming out of my thing. Cool. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. That's just. Well, there's a subtle art in making mistakes that the audience doesn't realize. Yeah. Right. Totally. Like no, the I, bandmates might. The audience does it, that's all that Oh yeah, you know, yeah. we got the in-ears, so we hear, we're hypersensitive to every noise oh, yeah. on stage, but the audience is much different. Yeah, I mean, yes. I mess up pretty badly, almost nightly. Wow. But usually, um, yeah, after you've doing, been doing it a while, you can cover it up, you know, somehow. Or, like Dan said, there's enough other stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, enough other people playing, it doesn't, right? Um, sure. It doesn't come out. Doesn't come across too bad, so. Cool, let's take a few more questions with the guys before we sign off. Oh, Kylie comes back. Uh, her son's name is Kai for Mordecai. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. So it's that's Kai, really cool name. he okay. was going to be Alaska if he was a girl. So it would have been a girl named Alaska. Cool, okay. Interesting. Uh, someone interesting. says uh, their cat's name is Mordecai. <laughs> okay. So there you this go. This is just getting out of control. Yeah, this is, so you, guys are, you guys are influential, man. <laughs> uh, people are asking, uh, Maybe a, a Parallax EP in part two tour, maybe 10th Gosh. anniversary. Uh, too early to tell? Don't hold your they, breath. They would have. <laughs> Parallax one, again, you know, that was, uh, when we wrote that, 
I don't necessarily think the a lot music of weird stuff going on yeah. necessarily yeah. resonates now. So that's again goes back to sort of cramming that kind of material into what we sound like now is probably not. But not two a great fit. is two. Two yeah, is a different story, but different also story. that's Excellent. we're talking twenty. 22 maybe yeah we got a, we got some other plans before then let's <laughs> yeah i mean we could all let's hang out yeah, yeah let's that's very likely we're stuff. all gonna be dead by then okay so. well there you go uh, <laughs> someone says they named their son autodidact they named their i don't s- their i don't son. believe <laughs> that that's <laughs> not pretty, true i'm pretty that's sure that's false all right so uh yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in thanks for between naming the all bear your to me. Thank children you for and pets after children and pets <laughs> yeah you know, maybe there's going to be a Yellow Eyes, the cat. Well, yep. there's also, there's that just works. Paul or Dan. I yeah, mean, we yeah. can use these very uh, normal names. names. Blake's uh, God-given name is Cartland. Yes, Cartland. Really? Blake Richardson. Uh, that's, yes. That'd be a good one if you're... Uh, I had no idea about Dusty's that. Dusty's is Cartland. Robert. Robert Dustin Waring. So we could throw those names out to Tommy's him. is uh, Thomas. Thomas. If Thomas Giles. That. Giles. Oh, Giles. Giles. My mistake. Thomas. I'm sorry about that. So Or Giles. <laughs> Giles. Yeah. So, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you stopping by. Our Make pleasure. sure to get Automata 1, fantastic. First half of the, I should say, Automata, oh, to, can, to be correct. correct. Technically, it can be pronounced either way. I say Automata. I, okay. did, I did an interview recently where a guy just didn't even try, and he just called it Automation. <laughs> automation <laughs> 1. So like, like, yeah, sure, whatever. whatever. <laughs> Bummer. All right. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> automata, Automata, whatever it is, 2, coming out, is it uh, July? We, I think it'll come out think the first early half of July. Hopefully yeah. in July. Yeah. So look out for that. I'm sure there'll be announce, an announcement soon from these guys. BT Bam, catch them on tour this year. They'll be all over the place. Thank you, guys. Thank you.